With the new Unicorn pack out, there's a completely new way to play custom in Super Auto Pets, and it's actually broken. Nothing's going to be that out of the ordinary for a little while, I'm just going to pick up a cricket. There you go, there's the pack if you're curious. And I've got to say, it's been a little while since I've done a commentary like this, so hopefully everything comes out alright, as this first battle does indeed come out alright, we end up with a draw. I'm going to pick up another cricket here, and typically you would think, okay, well you've got your level for the next turn, so just pick up whatever pets, it doesn't matter. Make sure you've got enough pets on the board and put as many stats as possible, but no! As I freeze those crickets there, you can see that I'm going for a level 3, which is just normally not worth it. It's not worth upgrading a tier 1 to a level 3. However, because of this new patch, this is the way you should be playing customs now. We managed to sneak away with a win there, and I can take two level 2 crickets. The first tier up is Sheep Beta Fish, and the second tier up is Puppy Osprey, and of course I'm going to take the Sheep. So, the reason that you go for level 3s in the early game now is because there is a certain pet called the Jersey Devil. I featured it on the channel before with an infinite gold build, and while that entire strategy has been nerfed, the Jersey Devil is still really powerful. So basically, if you didn't know, the Jersey Devil buffs summoned pets relative to how many level 3 pets have been sold. So, if you manage 5 cells, with the level 3 you can get maximum 15-15 to any summon, which is just so stupidly strong. So for me, the way I play customs now is just very, very silly. I try to greed really hard, try to find as many level 3s as possible. This entire turn I was rolling for pills and guinea pigs and just found nothing, so cool, minus 10, love that. But it's kind of like a mini game. You've got to, you've got to reach 5 level 3s before turn 9, and if you can manage that, then you're basically just going to win the game, because obviously none of these pets are going to stay. So I don't need to worry about scaling any of these guys up at all, I just need to win now and try to hunt level 3s. So I was rolling really hard for guinea pig last turn, but I'm still going to take it on turn 5. It basically summons another guinea pig, which is a free level and so it's really easy to get to level 3. I've got my level 3 cricket there so I can sell that whenever I don't need it anymore and again just horrible luck. I always freeze pills now as well. This is the first pill I've seen all game but when you pill an anteater it spawns a level 3 ant and you can sell that as well. So those are some of the ways you can start to increment that counter just before you get to the jersey double and somehow I think we're gonna be strong enough against this team. Yeah, look at that, the, the parrot jumps to the front as a drop there, but there's just enough, and so I've still not lost a life yet, which is also a really good position to be in. I'll put my lasagna on my cricket, it's still staying for a little bit longer, and there we go, that, that guinea pig is already almost up there. I get another pill, I'm going to bring in a platypus, uh, it will keep me winning because it summons on faint, but also, if you can get a platypus to level 3, then when you sell it, it'll summon two other level 3s, and you can basically get three cells for the price of one, so that's a really good, it's a really good value way of doing it. Unfortunately, we're going to take a loss here, I think. Never mind, we're going to take a draw here. The mass was perfect. So, still surviving, still thriving. And I call this like a scaling shortcut build, because you don't need to scale anything at all. You just complete your minigame, and then you're good to go. So I take a level up here, and here's a really cool strategy, actually. The level 2 sheep summons two level 2 rams, which you can combine into a level 3 ram. So at this point, I have two level 3s that I can sell, my cricket and my ram, and once I get one more guinea pig, I can also sell that, and that'll be three. So somehow I need to find two more level 3s to sell, and honestly, at this point in the game, I would have liked to have sold an anteater or two, as, by the way, the maths is absolutely perfect on that one. The Niala I bought was so clutch, and we come away with another draw, so still on five life. But yeah, the anteaters are a super easy and consistent way to get level 3s to sell, I just have not seen a single one yet. So I decided to try to level this platypus, when I sell it at level 3, it'll give me two other level 3s to sell, and that'll be more than enough for my jersey devil. I'll bring in a turkey here, because, you know, I've got some summons on my team, it sort of makes sense. Still looking for this last guinea pig, and there's my first anteater, but I just think it's too late at this point. Maybe not, maybe I sell the cricket for it. Indeed I do. Okay, so there you go, there's another out as well. If I find a pill, I'll have another level 3 to sell. I've sold two so far, recall. And, I mean, there's just no way I beat this team. Too many stats, this is just a slow, grinding death. The Chupacabra gives way too much... Way too many stats. In fact, it was slightly closer than I thought there, but the monkey is going to get it done. It's actually not a problem at all, though. I've got so much life and immediately hit two Jersey Devils, so we love that. I'm going to keep rolling, though. I want a pill for my anteater. I want another guinea pig, uh, but we're just not hitting anything. Maybe chocolates, even. I mean, I guess I'm asking a lot with a lot of my shop frozen. And I could end up bringing in this anteater. I decide not to. There's finally a pill. There's an alpaca. There's blobfish for experience that I'm going to leave there and... I mean, if I didn't win the last one, I'm probably not going to win this one. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, then please consider subscribing. I'm trying to hit 10k by the end of the year, and I can only do it with your help, so thank you so much. Of course, not a chance. So down to 3 life now, but the setup is just beginning. I'm going to sell the Niala, pill the Anteater, that's going to be a third level 3 sold, and actually I get 3 gold back from that one as well, which is really nice. I can bring in the Alpaca and the first Jersey Devil. This guy's going to be immediately level 2. 
Now, I'm deliberating whether to sell the turkey here and just get the Jersey Devil buff on the Jersey Devil buff and play it separately, but I just decided it's better to stack it. And now I've got a level 2 that's giving 6-6. Six, six. The Iggs Jazel fruit is probably worth it on something at some point, but we're going to leave it for now. And it's still just not hitting anything, but I will take a crow maybe for chocolate. Never mind. Now, this could be a loss as well. In fact, it is just not even close. I get destroyed by the snipes. At least it was a quick round. They put me out of my misery quickly. Now we're up to turn 11, and I will chocolate my Jersey Devil. And really right now I'm rolling for Platypus, I'm rolling for Jersey Devil, I'm rolling for Guinea Pig, any of these things. I've got the Alpaca experience and I hit the Jersey Devil first, so I'll bring that in, get the Jersey Devil and immediately level 3 it. And again, just bad gold interval. I do bring in an Orca. Maybe it does something this round. It is certainly up to decent stats with a 9-9, but I do want to sell some more level 3s. Unfortunately, we miss out on the Kappa spawns there. That would have been a really, really good thing to hit. However, I'm just going to be strong enough now. Some lucky spawns from the Orca into a into a spider, into a sheep, and it does enough. And plus 9-9 nine, nine on any summon is just, like genuinely still ridiculous. Uh, it's just not quite at the insane like threshold that I want yet. I find two chocolates for my platypus, so one more and I can finally sell it. Finally see the maximum potential of the Jersey Devil as we hop into battle again and, uh, well... I never stood a chance against this team, especially not with a Cobra sniping my Jevil twice. So yeah, don't even make it through the front sauropod, but I still have life to spare. I say with one life. It's all good, I'll bring in a Jersey Devil here. I freeze a boar, I freeze another Jersey Devil. There are a lot of things I want, and the main one is a platypus. It's just kind of an awkward situation for me at this point. No more pill. He doesn't know what he's doing, but finally, on the last roll, I hit it. I hit the platypus. I hit the chocolate, so I can sell the duck. I can sell the guinea pig, finally. I can sell the beaver. And bring in two Jersey Devils. <laughs> two insanely buffed up Jersey Devils and a huge boar. And even, I can cycle an orca here. I'm thinking about it, there we go. Sell that one and get huge stats on that guy as well. So... All of a sudden, my team has gone from, like, literally nothing to just an insanely strong turn 13 team. The Mantis Shrimp does nothing, the Skewer does nothing, doesn't even make it to the spawn from my Orca. So, now I've just got a massive team. Uh, this is the power of the Jersey Devil. And I call it the scaling shortcut, because here's what we're going to do now. I'm going to sell this Orca and bring in a Salmon of Knowledge, baby. The greatest pet in the game. So the idea is I've completely shortcutted scaling. Well, you were over here with your classic ways of getting more stats like Monkey or Husky and rolling for levels on your guys. Thanks to a Salmon and a Quirky Orange guy, I get instant levels and plus 25, 25 on everyone. And here's just the perfect example. This team is full scaling. They've got the Sea Lion. They've got the Hippocampus. They've got the Husky. And it's just not even close to my huge boars. My level 2 boars, thanks to the Salmon, the greatest pet in the game. Do you know what would be even better right here? A freaking beluga oh my days so my boar is now level 1.5 so if i get this salmon to level 2 it'll be instantly level 3 which is ultimately the goal now i want to find something for this beluga which is why i've been freezing this melon and i roll into a wolf which is simply perfect when you have two guys at the back of your team who are giving every summon plus 25 plus 25 so the wolf in there is going to summon three times in fact i can't even put it all the way back to get all the value but it's not like it's going to matter here i actually don't break through the camel first try but everything's just so big the pigs from the bulls are going to do enough, and yeah, the salmon cleans up right at the end. The salmon of knowledge, baby, it's so good. It's so good. I roll into double chocolate in my first shop, so I can instantly level 2 my salmon. And this level 2 salmon means that my boar with one experience is suddenly going to get to level 3. And if I can get one experience on my beluga, which I'm going to do with the chocolate bar, that will also be level 3. So I freeze the Niala. I have just enough gold to put it inside the beluga on level 1. So now both of these are going to be level 3 in battle. I'm going to have a level 3 Niala, and I've just completely shortcutted scaling. Also, the breakpoint on the boar means that it's going to get to 50 attack. So I'm getting 50 attack units without having scaled once. I bought this boar base stats and now it's just chilling on my team in battle with 50 attack. Like, this unicorn pack combo is so cool and so funny for customs. And this is going to be the final turn here. I might as well just slap a mushroom onto the Jersey Devil to keep it protected. And I think, no, actually, the boar is even cooler. Because the boar will resummon and get plus 25, 25. It'll be level 3. It'll get huge. The Yig's Drazel Fruit can go onto the Salmon and... I don't even need the Beluga. I don't even need to level up the Beluga. The Salmon is just too powerful. And so we're going to jump into the final battle here. And I'll pause it just so we can see what's going on. But immediately the Salmon triggers. And this is a really terrifying looking team, alright? They've got a Behemoth that is well over 50-50. So my boar is actually useless. 
notwithstanding the fact that it got skunked. However, we resummon. It gets up to 3838 from a 1 1 to a 3838. Uh, so that's enough to deal with the behemoth. Unfortunately, the breakpoint is not enough to deal with this weasel. The Niala faints, 24 trumpets in reserve. The Yig's Drizzle Fruit on the Seven of Knowledge summons two 28 28 units. Unfortunately, it doesn't do a whole lot. It does trade with the weasel and pops the melon here. The Jersey Devil is going to be enough to clean up the monkey. And then plus 15 15 on the Golden Retriever means that it's easily enough to take out the rest of their team. And we get the win with the Jersey Devil, the Salmon of Knowledge, the best Salmon of Knowledge team out there. Man, this is how you play customs now. You don't need to scale. Scaling is for suckers. Don't let anyone tell you that you need to scale. Sell five level threes, pivot into Jersey Devil, and never lose again. I hope you enjoyed the video. Slap like, slap subscribe, slap comment, and I will see you in the next one.